Alright guys, welcome back to the channel where today we have some big news in regards to the future of the WWE 2K series as Patrick Gilmore, the new executive producer for the franchise, today took part in the Reddit Ask Me Anything session in which he revealed a lot of new details about the future of the series and the areas of the game that he and his team will be focusing on. So we're going to run through all the biggest news coming out of the session, but before we get to the future of the franchise, let's start with the current game, WWE 2K20, as inevitably a lot of the questions directed at Patrick were in regards to what the future holds for that game and if we could see any further updates. So will we see any future updates? Apparently not. Responding to the question, Patrick stated, my best answer to new patches for 2K20 is probably not. He then went on to elaborate on his answer, noting that a lot of the problems currently plaguing the game are down to memory overruns, specifically when using custom characters and arenas, as the consoles just don't have the resources needed to be able to run them. He then stressed that in order to fix those issues, the team would need to change the file formats that are in use and rework the code used in the game, however that code is not something that they plan to use going forward, as maintaining old code is one of the biggest things preventing the team from making bigger and more comprehensive changes. So as sad as it is, it doesn't look like we'll be seeing any future updates to 2K20 as the team will now solely focus on the next game. So that's the bad news out of the way, but let's move on to future plans. As Patrick was asked about his vision for the series and what he feels it needs, to which he revealed that he wants to give players the experience of being a WWE superstar. I love the question about whether wrestling games are all about winning. It's one of the biggest questions I asked when I first started. Basically, is it theatre or is it sport? In all our discussions, we came down on the side of sport. We want to focus on the authenticity of rivalries, athleticism and the experience of being a superstar locked into meaningful combat in front of an audience of thousands. When we describe the core focus of the next game, we sometimes use the phrase, step out of the crowd, step into the ring. This reflects an effort to move a little bit away from the audience slash broadcast experience and towards the superstar experience. This central focus can affect our approach to almost every aspect of the game. We hope it produces the most authentic wrestling game ever. Patrick also went on to say that he wants to build on the core combat elements as well as making the stakes of a match feel real and impactful before then bringing that into other game modes such as online, universe and the creation suite. Speaking of the creation suite, it was revealed that this is set to be a huge focus for the next game, with the developers looking to streamline the interface and improve the overall experience, with Patrick revealing that they're upgrading the base models and trying to bring more personality and flow into the process, with the team's goal being to create tools that feel like magic, giving everyone the ability to create something that looks amazing. One thing that doesn't look like it'll change though is the restrictions that are in place when customising the in-game superstars, such as the inability to change a superstar's hairstyle, as it was revealed that this comes down to WWE wanting to protect their performers and their likeness, therefore this isn't something that is likely to change, however if a superstar does change their appearance prior to the release of the game, then this is something that they'll attempt to change. When it comes to new create modes, Parrick stated that he's a big fan of create a story and that you would love to get it back into the game, stating that we definitely want to do it at some point. As for custom music, which was another highly requested feature in the recent feedback program, Parrick confirmed that this is also something that they're looking into, however copyright is potentially a big stumbling block. Patrick stated, We've had discussions about importing custom music and it can be a bit of a legal snarl. As creators ourselves, we have to take care when it comes to rights of other creators, example musicians. For most music, the original artist retains the right to synchronise picture to the music, so we need to take care to offer the feature in the right way. I can't commit to anything right now, but it's on a list of things to explore. While we wait to see how the discussions go regarding custom music, another exciting prospect is the addition of cross-platform community creations which would allow players on PlayStation consoles to download creations on Xbox and vice versa, with the online producer revealing that this was the number one most requested feature for community creations and that the team are actively looking into how feasible this would be. Switching focus over to core gameplay, it was revealed that the gameplay itself is something that's getting a major investment, with the team looking at the much loved No Mercy and Here Comes the Pain, alongside more modern wrestling and fighting games to try and build a new philosophical foundation. Rather than just straight up rip the system used in one of those games, Parry claims that the team want to take the best elements of each of them and then combine those elements to create a new experience, which he hopes will set a new standard. 
Expanding on this, Parik teased a significant gameplay evolution in the next instalment, writing the gameplay team is focused on accessibility, depth and wrestling experience. For accessibility, we're obsessed with a single intuitive interface which is meaning and depth in a wide variety of contexts, i.e. the game is a lot smarter about what the player is trying to do in a given gameplay situation, such as in a grapple, on the ropes, against the turnbuckle, etc, with consistent inputs regardless of situation. New players should be able to accidentally pull off awesome moves just by playing with and experimenting with the controls. For depth, we're looking a lot at ring position, deeper combos and working moves, limb damage, technical capabilities, match momentum and unlocks, and rock paper scissors RPS strategies by archetype and player style. Depth doesn't come from the manual skill of pressing the proper buttons, but from the psychological game of anticipating and countering your opponent's strategy and this needs to be built in from the very foundation, so expect a significant evolution in gameplay with the next instalment. The last aspect of great gameplay is capturing the essence of professional wrestling which has dimensions of drama, changing context, massive roster, backstage action, weapons and props, audience participation and spectacle. One of the huge challenges of the franchise is finding ways for players to feel in control of the vast number of potential outcomes in a given match. While we take lessons from fighting games, action RPGs and other genres, this aspect helps us stay focused on delivering a through and through wrestling game. While we're determined to deliver the spectacle and specific moments of a genuine match, I can say we're trying to get away from UI pop-ups or mini-games to represent things like pinfalls or reversals and instead move those concepts into more fully realised mechanics which feel like extensions of the main experience. Based off this response, it sounds like the gameplay that we see in the next game will be completely different to what we used to, with the whole system getting a complete overhaul. So that's gameplay and the creation suite, but what about the likes of Universe Mode, My Career Mode and the highly requested GM Mode? Well, Parry confirmed that GM Mode is high up on the priority list after it was revealed to be the most requested feature in the feedback program, however rather than bring back the mode as it was, his message to fans is that they're not just going to try out a mode from 2008 without bringing something new and that they've got their top minds working on proposals for its return. As for my career mode, it also sounds like we've seen some updates here as it was revealed that the main goal is to put more emphasis on player choice so that the story itself feels more like your story rather than playing through a preset experience. When it comes to universe mode, not a lot was revealed in regards to the direction that the team will be going, however Patrick did reveal that he's continuing to reach out to well known players from the community to try and get feedback and advice on what they want to see as they continue to improve the overall universe experience with new features. On that note, I can also confirm that I was one of the people that you reached out to and we had a good talk about the mode and ways that can be improved, so it'll be interesting to see how those conversations shape the mode going forward. For players that enjoy playing online, Parrot revealed that the online section of the game is another of the six key areas that they're looking to enhance, with updates here looking to address match quality, desync, slag and matchmaking speed, as well as a host of other things that affect the quality of online matches such as being able to abuse the controls. One of the best notes here was the fact that they're also considering reaching out to the community to conduct a closed beta test which would be a great way for them to gain feedback on the changes before the game actually releases as this would allow them time to fine tune any problems that crop up. As we begin to wrap things up, some of the other things teased in the AMA were updates to the physics engine both in regards to players and object interactions, commentary updates, new match types, reviewing and modernising areas of the creation suite such as hairstyles as well as hair in general which is said to be a big focus. Also interesting to hear and great news for the modding community was that the team are actively looking into the possibility of mod support after 2K20 effectively ended modding due to the changes in file types, however modding remains something that they say they can see huge value in, therefore it's something that they're discussing and prioritising along with other new features. Finally, when asked about the possibility of the game coming out on next gen consoles, the response was that they'll need to make a host of changes in both technology and content to be able to support PS5 and Xbox Series X, therefore they've taken stock of the requirements to determine the best strategy for next gen which would then allow them to carry game features over to the new hardware so that we don't get a repeat of 2K15 where game modes need to be rewritten and therefore removed which sounds like a long way of them saying that the next game won't be on next gen but they are putting things in place to make that jump when the time is right. 
So there you go, that's a breakdown of everything coming out of Patrick's Reddit AMA. It's great to see him continue to interact with the community on this kind of level and give us these kind of updates, which is something that he said he plans to continue doing throughout development. Anyway guys, that is it for this video, but let me know what you made of the details coming out of the AMA in the comments, and if you're not subscribed to the channel already, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and join us as we cover all things WWE games. Until next time though, thank you for watching, have yourself an awesome day, and I'll catch you later.